Welcome back. Hopefully you have a little intuition now on, of what the curl is. Now let's actually compute it, because if your sole goal is to pass a test and not understand the nature of the universe, which I think would be sad. But if that is your goal, you at least need to know how to calculate these things. But it's even more fun when you know how to, when you know how to, and when you when you have the intuition. And then you you'll hopefully never forget it. But we'll take the curl of a fairly fancy vector field, one that I have trouble visualizing, but that we can mathematically chug through. So let's say our vector field. And I'll I'll do a three-dimensional vector field just to do a fairly complicated example. I'm just going to make it up on the fly. So let's say in the x direction, the magnitude of the field is, I don't know, let's say it's x squared y sine z in the x direction plus, I don't know, let's make it x y squared z in the j direction, in the y direction. And in the z direction, I don't know, let's make it cosine of x times cosine of y in the z direction. Now, we said that you can view the curl of this vector field. And I have no intuition of what this vector field looks like. I just made this up. Maybe we'll graph it for fun, just to see what how messed up it looks. But we said this curl, you could view it as the dot as a cross product of the of our del operator and the vector field well when you when you were using this engineering notation when you have your uh, a vector broken down into its x y and z components or its i j and k components you can take the determinant of that matrix you, uh, when i showed you how to compute the cross product to figure out the cross product so let, how do we do this so the cross product is going to be equal to I didn't have to draw a straight line. So how do you take the cross product of, of this vector field and the gradient operator? Well, you write i, j, k on top, like you're taking the cross product of any two three-dimensional vectors. And then you take the first vector, but in this, it's really a vector operator, but it's this, this del operator. And what are the components of the del operator? It's the partial derivative with respect to x, the partial derivative with respect to y, the partial derivative with respect to z. Right? Let me just rewrite the del operator. You could view it as being equal to the partial with respect to x, i, plus the partial with respect to y, j, plus the partial with respect to z, k. Right? So it's x, y, and z components, so the partial with respect to x, with respect to y, with respect to z. And then the second, where we're taking this operator across the vector field. So what are the components in the vector field? I'll probably run out of space, but it's x squared y sine z. Then here it's x, y squared z. I should have written all of this bigger. And then in the third column, the z component is cosine of x times cosine of y, right? Just the x, y, and z components. And now we are ready to take the determinant, which will probably, well, it'll probably get pretty messy. But let's try it. So this is equal to the i unit vector. The i unit vector, let me use a more vibrant color. The i unit vector times its subdeterminant. So you cross out its row and column, and so you're taking the determinant of this expression. So it's going to be times. Well, this times this, but it's really the partial. If you multiply the, the partial with respect to y operator times an expression, you're really just taking, since it's an operator and not an expression, you're really just going to take the partial of this with respect to y. But I'll write it down. So it's going to be the partial with respect to y of cosine x cosine y minus the partial with respect to z times x y squared z. And now we're on to our j component plus j. So now we're what's the magnitude of, of our curl in the j direction? Let's cross out the row and the column of j. So it's the partial with respect to x of this. So this is maybe messier than I originally intended. Cosine of x cosine of 
y cross the, see this comes there minus the partial with respect to z minus the partial with respect to z of x squared y sine of z and then finally our k component oh and sorry when you take the determinant you use that the kind of you and you know this is all kind of a bit of voodoo but you put a plus here a minus here a plus here so it's kind of this checkered pattern so this is plus i this should actually be minus j don't want to make that mistake this is minus j this is just kind of the the this is just the 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 algorithm of how do you take a determinant okay and then finally we have plus k plus k times the determinant of its of its submatrix so the partial with respect to x of this partial with respect to x of cosine x so right oh no no sorry we take out its row and column so of x y squared z minus the partial with respect to y of this of right we took its row and column so this is the submatrix of x squared y sine of z. All right, now let me try to simplify it, and I'll have to get some space. Hopefully, you understood what I do, did here, and now we got this. And now I think I can erase all of this, and just so I can have some room to simplify things in. Just to, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to do it in a darker color. That's what I wanted to do. Erase that. Erase that. Now we just have to simplify it. Taking a bunch of partial derivatives. What's the partial derivative of this with respect to y? Well, x is just a constant, so it's going to be, it's going to be, well, we could just put the i out front, but eventually we want to write our magnitude before the vector. So it's i times the partial of this with respect to y. What's our constant? Cosine of x is just a constant, and then what's the derivative of this with respect to y? It's minus sine of y, right? So we'll write sine of y. And let's put the minus out front. Right? These are what's multiplied. Okay. And then we have minus. Minus. Now we have to take the partial with respect. Sorry, actually, I should I forgot to do this part. Let me let me let me start over, actually. So let me just take this expression and then I'll multiply it by i. The partial of this with respect to y is cosine of x times minus sine of y. Let's put the minus out front. Minus sine of y. Sine of y. Now minus the partial of this with respect to z. Well, if this with the uh, partial of this with respect to z, is x y squared is just a constant, right? So the partial of this with respect to z is just x y squared. So minus x y squared, and then we're going to have all of that. That's the magnitude in our i direction. And now we have minus, right? Because minus in the j direction. What's the partial derivative of this with respect to x? Well, the partial of cosine x with respect to x is minus sine of x. So it's minus sine of x. And cosine of y is just a constant, so it just carries over, cosine of y. And then that should be, oh yeah, there we go, minus this expression, the partial of this with respect to z. Well, the, partial, the, the derivative of sine of z with respect to z is cosine of z. This is just a constant, so it's minus x squared y cosine of z. And that's the magnitude in the j direction. We're almost there. And now, finally, plus, what's the partial of this with respect to x? Well, these are just constants. So it's y squared z minus, once again, we just have a y term. Everything else is a constant. So the partial with respect to y is x squared sine of z, and that's the magnitude in our k direction. And we're pretty much done. I mean, we can, we can simplify it a little bit just to make it clean. I mean, essentially, we could just, well, I don't have to rewrite it. We can just multiply this by negative 1, so this becomes plus, plus, plus. And yeah, that's pretty much it. This is the curl of the vector field v at any point x, y, and z. So that's how you calculate it. You just literally take the cross product of that, of that del 
operator and your vector field. And you'll, you'll get something fairly hairy, although this was, I think, a hairier than average problem. In the next video, we'll do a little bit of this, but I think it'll give you more intuition and less of just the algorithm and the computation of how do you do it.